So there's lots of uh, ways to keep atrial fibrillation from occurring, but understanding the patients who might um, develop it more readily is, is where we need to be to manage it most effectively. Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And I am here. We're talking about atrial fibrillation, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, and coronary heart disease, and how specifically technology is evolving to save lives. And I am very honored to have Mr. Mark Goddard with us, who is the Vice President of Clinical Services for Infobionic dot com. And for those of you that are interested, um, this is really a powerful subject. And so Mark, welcome back to the show. Um, and I'm excited to talk a little bit about technology and how it's evolved specifically and what you guys do. So welcome back. Tell me about your device. Sure. Well, I will say I started my career where we were using what I would call antiquated equipment at that time things that were not digital, things that did not transmit near real time, things that were uh, cumbersome to, to manage as far as getting the information for patient diagnostics. Mm -hmm. The infobionic device is a device that is able to transmit in near real time, no it's matter amazing. what type of modality of monitoring is being utilized. So in other words, you're about three minutes behind uh, what's happening currently when you're wearing the device. And as a result, you're able to act as a, a prescriber relatively quickly to things you may find, mm -hmm. specifically atrial fibrillation. If you're in atrial fibrillation longer than a few hours, there's potential for blood clots to form. Yeah. Our device is designed to um, attack that issue directly with near real-time data mm -hmm. transfer. Um, no, is this the, your device? Is it something that someone wears? How, how does it work? It is. It's a wearable. There are two different options. There's a patch that you could wear that's just a singular sticky that mm -hmm. goes on your chest. Or we have one that has three electrodes that you could wear as well. The device that transmits the information to the cloud where it's processed and, and viewed within the secure connection on the internet, um, that device doesn't need to be kept on your person per se. You only need to be within about 30 feet of that. So you wear this wearable, you have a what looks like a cell phone with you, that device transmits information to the cloud for review. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty easy device to wear. It's almost like you don't notice you're wearing it at all. And that's been the the idea, make it mm -hmm. comfortable and, and wearable. And um, that's what we've done. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah. and obviously, um, you know, because it's so quick to notify, Obviously, this is saving lives. Um, you know, I, I'm fascinated how technology has evolved and in so many ways lately. Um, you know, obviously, your device is fairly new to market with a, the whole concept of AI. Tell mm -hmm. me how it's been received. Tell me some stories of how it's affected people's lives. Well, in the end, that near real-time data reception is what's really been a game changer as far as people who, ha who have long pauses or uh -huh. inflation. We've been able to address that right away. But what I'm really excited about is the AI potential within the platform currently and what that's going to look like moving forward. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the idea currently is prevention of ever going into atrial fibrillation. Right. So what we're doing in the background is getting millions of clean data sets analyzing them, looking for subtle nuances within cardiac waveforms that mm -hmm. may indicate a patient is more prone to atrial fibrillation. Right. An AI um, algorithm we're hoping to deploy within the next year. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that and what be. does early detection, what would that mean for the future? It's well, incredible to think about that. It is. It means that we could potentially keep people from actually ever going into atrial fibrillation based on the current technologies, whether it's medication. There are some um, tools that are now considered a first line of defense against atrial fibrillation that are mechanical procedures where mm -hmm. cells within the heart are burned in a way that it makes it hard for atrial fibrillation ever to occur. Um, so there's lots of uh, ways to keep atrial fibrillation from occurring, 
but understanding the patients who might um, develop it more readily is is where we need to be to manage it most effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And obviously with this kind of atrial or, you know, with this type of early detection, there's going to improve quality of life like tenfold. If, if someone goes a long time without being detected and Mm -hmm. there is clots, how can that, you know, obviously they're going to go on for a while thinking that there's nothing wrong unless they are checked out. How do people specifically, um, you know, uh, understand that they need to be checked and things like that? I think they just need to understand or recognize symptoms that may not be um, so innocent. Uh, Shortness Mm -hmm. of breath that happens suddenly or unusual fatigue on exertion. um, Or just extra tired all the time. I I mean, I think a lot of us, we just toss it up to, well, I've just been busy lately, or I have a lot of stress and then they, and they slough it off when actuality, there could be something happening. And that's why, you know, the older you get, (laughs) it's so important to make sure that you have regular physicals and things like that. Absolutely. Totally agree. And I think the number one takeaway related atrial fibrillation is if you're 50 years or older, you're more likely to have atrial fibrillation. So just keep that in. And if you were younger than 50. Yeah. Yeah. And it happens more to men than women. Does it not? It does. Yeah. You'll find it. And and obviously sometimes, and I, I notice men are more susceptible to not wanting to go to the doctor and not wanting to take care of themselves. I think they're more likely to have longer periods of high blood pressure. Yeah. And again, that's a, a primary factor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Obviously, does diet and exercise play a big part uh, part of AFib? It really does. Uh, And the diet would be what you would expect for a healthy diet to keep you Mm -hmm. from going into atrial fibrillation, right? You don't want to eat foods that increase blood pressure. Um, You want to make sure you're not um, eating too many sugars. Mm -hmm. If you are diabetic, make sure you're managing your your blood glucose as as best you can. Mm -hmm. And do all the healthy things that would be part of any any healthy lifestyle. Those are the things that are going to keep you healthy for your right. health. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so obviously, if you're going to the doctor or all kinds of things like that, heart disease is such a big thing. Um, my question is going to a doctor and talking about your device. How does your device overall work and how lack of interfering or interfering in their lives is it? It's very easy to use. The fact of the matter is you have a cell phone that's going to be um, brought along with the device Uh that you have to keep charged. So to me, um, and what we recommend is just, hey, when you get home, plug in the device, leave it plugged in. When you leave, you can bring it with you. You'll get that near real-time data transmission. Mm -hmm. As far as wearing it, though, you almost wouldn't know whether it's the three-leaded device or the patch. A lot of patients take the patch because it's one sticky. I will say the three leaded device gives you a lot more clinical information is a better. Right. Um, right. So, yeah. But as far as wearing it and what that feels like, it's really easy and carefree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, that's it's, powerful. And mm-hmm. for our listeners, again, learn more about this device. You can go to infobionic.com and learn a little bit more about how it works. And there's a full explanation. And then check with your doctor if you feel like, number one, make sure you're getting checkups. And number two, make sure that if you are, this might be a factor in, in helping you have much more of a normal life and especially early detection. And Mark and I, we're going to be right back right after this. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com. 